Welcome fellow gardeners and soil enthusiasts to another Hydrohaven journey into sustainable growing practices. Today we're diving deep into the rich agricultural wisdom of the Amish community to uncover two powerful but largely forgotten methods for bringing seemingly dead soil back to vibrant life. If you've ever struggled with compacted, nutrient-depleted or barren soil, this guide will provide you with time-tested techniques that work with nature rather than against it. These methods have sustained Amish farmers for generations, yet remain surprisingly absent from modern gardening discourse. Before we explore these revival techniques, it's worth understanding why so many of us face soil problems in the first place. Modern conventional agriculture has embraced practices that prioritize short-term yields over long-term soil health chemical fertilizers that bypass natural nutrient cycles, excessive tilling that destroys soil structure, and monoculture growing that depletes specific nutrients. The result? Once rich earth transformed into lifeless growing medium that requires ever-increasing inputs just to produce a harvest. Amish farmers, by contrast, have maintained traditions that treat soil as a living ecosystem rather than merely a growing medium. Their methodology stems from centuries of observation and respect for natural processes. What makes their approach remarkable isn't just its effectiveness, but its elegant simplicity. These methods require minimal external inputs while maximizing biological activity in the soil. Now let's explore two powerful Amish soil revival techniques that can transform even the most challenging plots into fertile ground. The first forgotten Amish technique we'll explore is what I call the sheet mulch fermentation system. This method goes far beyond typical sheet mulching, incorporating specific materials in precise layers to create ideal conditions for rapid soil regeneration. At its core, this process mimics the forest floor's natural decomposition cycle but accelerates it dramatically through careful material selection and arrangement. The Amish have refined this technique over generations, particularly in areas where they inherited depleted farmland. Begin by thoroughly soaking your compacted soil area with water, not just damp but truly saturated. This initial moisture is crucial for the microbial processes that follow. Next, apply a thin layer, about half an inch, of well-aged manure, preferably from horses or cows. The Amish specifically choose manure from animals fed on diverse pasture rather than grain-exclusive diets, as this introduces a wider spectrum of beneficial microorganisms. Over this foundation, add a quarter-inch layer of crushed eggshells and wood ash mixed in equal proportions. This critical mineral layer provides calcium, potassium, and trace elements that jumpstart microbial activity. The Amish traditionally save eggshells throughout the year and burn hardwood, never pressure-treated or painted wood, for this specific purpose. Next comes what the Amish call the green gold layer, fresh green material approximately 2 inches thick. This should consist of nitrogen-rich plants like comfrey, young nettle before its seeds, clover or even kitchen vegetable scraps. Cover this with approximately 4 inches of straw or hay preferably material that has been slightly dampened and allowed to warm for a day before application. This creates ideal conditions for thermophilic or heat-loving bacteria that accelerate decomposition. The final layer is 3 to 4 inches of deciduous tree leaves, preferably oak or maple, which have been shredded or partially broken down. The Amish collect these in fall and store them semi-dry until needed. Once all layers are in place, water the entire structure thoroughly again until you see moisture seeping from the bottom layers. Cover the entire area with burlap sacks or old wool blankets. Synthetic materials won't work as they don't breathe properly. And weigh them down with stones around the edges. Leave this creation to work for 6 to 8 weeks, depending on your climate. During this time, a remarkable transformation occurs beneath the surface as multiple forms of decomposition create a complex web of nutrients and microbial life. The second forgotten Amish technique addresses mineral deficiencies that plague many exhausted soils. Modern agriculture often focuses exclusively on NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but the Amish understand that truly vibrant soil requires dozens of minerals in proper balance. What makes these Amish techniques so valuable is their adaptability to any scale, from backyard gardens to larger market farms. They require no specialized equipment, just patience and attention to the materials used. Most importantly, they create self-perpetuating soil health. Once established, these systems require decreasing intervention each year as natural cycles reassert themselves. 
Remember that soil regeneration is not an overnight process even with these accelerated methods. The Amish view soil building as a sacred responsibility that unfolds over seasons and years. Document your soil's transformation through photographs and notes, you'll be amazed at the progression from dead dirt to living earth. When applying these methods, honor the Amish attention to timing and observation. Work with natural cycles rather than against them. Apply these techniques in early spring or fall when natural decomposition processes are most active. Avoid the intense heat of summer when biological activity might become too vigorous and potentially damage young plant roots. By adopting these forgotten Amish soil revival methods, you're not just improving your garden, you're preserving valuable agricultural wisdom that risks being lost in our fast-paced, technology-focused world. Each handful of revitalized soil represents a connection to generations of careful stewardship and observation. Remember that healthy soil creates healthy plants, which create healthy people. The Amish have always understood this connection, maintaining these practices not just for better harvests but for the well-being of their communities and the land they will pass to future generations. If you found value in these traditional methods, please subscribe to the Hydro Haven channel for more forgotten wisdom made relevant for today's gardeners. Share this video with fellow soil enthusiasts who might benefit from these techniques. Together, we can revive not just our soil but our connection to sustainable growing practices that stand the test of time.